good morning uh, today's session is about pl sql oracle pl sql so uh, it's i'll uh, give you a overview of what what are the topics that we are going to cover in this session so the first one is overview of pl sql next one declaring pl sql variables writing executable statements interacting with the oracle db server writing control structure working with composite data type using explicit cursors handling exceptions creating procedure creating function creating packages working with packages using oracle supplied packages in application development using dynamic sql design consideration for pl sql creating triggers creating compound dbl and event triggers using pl sql compiler managing pl sql code and managing dependencies these are the 20 topics that we will cover in in this course so let's start with the first chapter overview of pl sql So overview of PL SQL. PL SQL basically is a procedural extension to SQL. SQL is structured query language. It is used uh, by all RDBMS to query the data stored in the database. Uh, database uh, means tables and columns and rows. So data is stored in rows and columns in, in a table. So these tables are internally related, that's why it's called Relational Database Management System and Oracle is one of the Relational Database Management System, RDBMS. And to query RDBMS, we need uh, the, the interface to query an RDBMS is SQL, Structured Query Language. So Oracle also has a flavor of SQL. And PL SQL is a procedural extension to SQL. What that means is basically you can write your if then else logic on top of SQL queries. So that is PL SQL. Data manipulation and query statements of SQL are included within the procedural units of code. It's a procedural unit of code where basically data manipulation like insert, update, delete and select queries and select statements. This can be written inside the procedural unit of code and that is what is PL SQL all about. Why to use PL SQL, basically PL SQL as for example, if you are updating the salary of department 20, 30, and 40, if you have to write it in SQL, you have to write multiple update statements. Four, four update statements, you will have to write individual update statements. As you can see, update in EMP says salary is equal to salary plus 100, where department ID is equal to 10. The first, the first use case, where we raise the salary by hundred dollars. Similarly, we'll have to write four different update statements. Whereas in PL SQL, we'll write a procedure update salary, which will take the parameter department ID and the amount for by which the salary has to be increased. And then within begin end, we will write the one single update statement. So this is the difference between SQL and PL SQL. In PL SQL, we have a procedural unit where we can write our logic using the same SQL statements. PL SQL provides a block structure for executable units of code. Maintenance of code is made easier with such well-defined structure. So PL SQL provides a block structure. I'll come to what is a PL SQL block in the next uh, lecture. 
PSQL provides procedural constructs such as variable constants, data type, control structures such as conditional statements and loops, reusable program units that are written once and executed many times. So these these are the feature of the language. So PSQL environment. We have PSQL block, which goes, which contains the procedural statements and the SQL statement. The procedural statements are executed by procedural statement executed within the Oracle database. <coughs> Sorry. And the, PA, and the SQL and the SQL blocks are executed by the SQL statement executed. So, with the help of both procedural statement executor and SQL statement executor, the PLCL program is executed. Benefits of PLCQL integration of procedural construct with SQL, improve performance. Modularized program development, you can create procedural function packages. Integration with Oracle tools like Oracle Forms, Oracle Reports, and Oracle Apex. Portability PLSQL programs can run anywhere where, a, or where an Oracle server is running. So it can only run on Oracle server because PLSQL is a product of Oracle and it is designed to run on any Oracle server and also it has exception handling capability. So PLSQL block structure, PLSQL block structure is shown here. It starts with declare which is an optional part of the block. And here, variable cursor user defined exceptions, these are defined, these are declared. Then we have begin, which is the mandatory mandatory part. This, in the begin, we write the SQL statement, PL SQL statements. Then we have exception, which is again an optional part. This is where we write actions to perform when some error occurs. And then finally end, which is our mandatory. So begin and end are mandatory, declared and exception are optional. Block types, we have anonymous block types. It starts with declare, begin, exception, end. Then we have procedure, which is a stored sub program and function which is also a stored sub program. The procedure functions are like written once and executed many times but anonymous blocks are executed once they don't have a name so you cannot call an anonymous block. You cannot store an anonymous block. That's why it's not a sub program, that procedure function, they are sub program. Difference between anonymous blocks and sub programs anonymous blocks are unnamed PLCQL blocks. They don't have a name. Sub program, we do have a name, they are named PLCQL blocks. Anonymous programs are compiled every time. Every time you run anonymous block, it is compiled. The sub programs are compiled only once. Anonymous blocks are not stored in the database. Sub programs are stored in the database. Anonymous blocks cannot be invoked by other applications. Sub programs are named and therefore they can be invoked by other applications. Anonymous blocks do not return any value. Sub programs called functions must return a value. The function must return a value. Anonymous blocks cannot take parameters, but sub programs can take parameters. <coughs> so 
Okay, now let's write some depending upon what we learn till now. Let's write some code here. <coughs> so the DBMS output output line is like messaging for PL sequence. So any message you want to print on the screen. On the console, you write dbms output or put line. dbms output is a package, Horizon supply package, and put line is a procedure under that package. We'll come to package and procedure later. But remember that this dbms output or put line is a way to do messaging in PL SQL. Like you, in other languages, you might have like message or alert or prompt similarly for PHSQL the interface is dbms output dot put line <coughs> so let's run this so this is the output this is my first anonymous block so this is what my first anonymous block my first anonymous block. Okay. Let's run this. This is the first line, this is the second line. So whatever I am trying to print, it gets printed. And here you see the mandatory as I said that anonymous block is a mandatory part of begin and end. So within begin and end you can write pay people for. Here we have a declare or section also, begin and end. If we run this, hello world. Next here we declare, we declare a number and begin. We assign 5 to the number and then we have two DBMS output. One is hello world, one is the number itself. So if I run this, hello world, 5. Okay. This you have already seen. Okay. Right. Now we'll move on to the next chapter. Next chapter is declaring PLSQL variables. <coughs>